everyone, it's Miss Rachel with this week's Children's Church lesson. Um, and we've been talking the last couple weeks about Jesus when he was young. A couple weeks ago we talked about when he was born. Then last week we talked about when he was brought um, to the temple and Simeon uh, gave him a blessing and was excited to see him uh, because he had been looking forward to him for a long time. And today we're going to talk about other stories from the Bible about when Jesus was a child. But first I want to ask you a question. Did you ever wonder what your parents looked like when they were kids? Do you, have you ever seen any pictures of them when they were little? Uh, well, sometimes my kids ask, and I do have some pictures of when I was little. Here's one that I want to share with you. What do you think? Does that look like me? I still have red hair. It's hard to tell in the picture, but this is me when I was in my children's church class when I was a toddler in school or, or at church and um, there's me with my stylish 80s sweater so I just want to share that picture with you but when I look at pictures of when I was a kid I think about how everyone's childhood has a lot of similarities to it there's some things that are the same like for example everybody when they're a kid uh, when they start out as a baby, they learn to walk and talk, they learn how to read, they play with their friends, um, they grow in different ways, um, they experience their family life. So there's a lot of similarities about everyone's childhood. But there's also some differences too. There's some things that might be different about my childhood that's not the same as yours. Like uh, as a child, I had a brother and a sister I still do but growing up with a brother and a sister you might not have that so that made our childhoods a little different so there's some things that are the same about all our childhoods and some things that are different well the same is true when it we come to Jesus's childhood there are some things that are the same about our childhood and about Jesus childhood because we're all humans Jesus is human but there's some things that are different about Jesus' childhood because Jesus is also God. We've been talking about that in this unit from Children's Church. We've been saying, is Jesus God or human? It's kind of a trick question because as the Son of God, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. So the human part of Jesus' childhood is similar to ours. So he grew and he learned to walk and talk like we do. He learned how to read. He would uh, do his chores that he was supposed to do. But Jesus' childhood was also different because he's God. So we're going to look at some stories today in God's Word about Jesus' childhood. And I want you to figure out from these uh, passages what's the same about Jesus' childhood as compared to ours and what's different about his childhood because he's God. So if you don't have your Bible already, I want you to pause the video and go get your Bible. We're going to turn to um, the book of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Um, oh, actually, we're going to do Matthew 2. Sorry, made a mistake. We're going to go to two different places today. First we're going to start in Matthew chapter 2. If you don't remember, Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. So turn to Matthew chapter 2 and we are going to look at, let me look at my verses while you're turning to it. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 2 and we're going to start in verse 1. All right, so follow along with me. I have my Bible here. We're going to start in Matthew 2, verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. This happened while Herod was king of Judea. After Jesus' birth, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw its star when it rose. Now we've come to worship him. When King Herod heard about it, he was very upset. Everyone in Jerusalem was troubled too. So Herod called together all the chief priests of the people. He also called the teachers of the law. He asked them where the Messiah was going to be born. 
in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. This is what the prophet has written. He said, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are certainly not the least important among the towns of Judah. A ruler will come out of you. He will rule my people Israel like a shepherd. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men. He found out from them exactly when the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem. He said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report it to me. Then I can go and worship him too. After the wise men had listened to the king, they went on their way. The star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them. It finally stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. The wise men went into the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned them in a dream not to go back to Herod, so they returned to their country on a different road. Now this story is probably familiar to you. Usually at Christmas time we talk about the wise men coming to get bring gifts. And what were those gifts? We'd see that in verse 11. Look at verse 11. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So one thing I see that's the same about this part of Jesus's childhood and our childhood is getting gifts. Do you get gifts for birthdays and Christmases for different celebrations? Well, Jesus got gifts here. We know what that's like to come get a gift. But there's something that's significant that's different about Jesus's childhood compared to ours. Look at verse 2, Matthew 2 verse 2. The wise men have a specific reason why they are finding Jesus and looking for him. It says, where is the child who has been born to be king of the Jews? We saw its star when it rose. Now we have come to worship him. Now look at verse 11 again. Matthew 2 verse 11. It says the wise men went to the house. There they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. The wise men went to find Jesus in order to worship him. And when they found him, they bowed down and worshiped him. Now, did that happen to you when you were younger? That didn't happen to me. There we see one of the reasons that Jesus' childhood was different. Because Jesus is God, he is to be worshiped. And that's what the wise men knew. That's why they came to find him and seek him, to worship him. So in one way, Jesus' childhood was similar He's there with his mom and dad in the house. They're getting presents. But in a bigger way, it's different because Jesus is God and he was being worshipped. We're supposed to worship Jesus. That's part of what we do together at church. And that happened even when he was young. People knew that he was to be worshipped. Now let's look at another story from Jesus' childhood. There aren't a lot of them in scripture, but there is this one with the wise men. And then there's another one in Luke chapter 2. So let's turn over to Luke chapter 2. If you're in Matthew, the next book is Mark, and then the following book is Luke. And we know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those four books together, they're called the Gospels. And they're the ones that tell about what Jesus' life was like when he came here on earth. Or for the first time. So Luke 2 is where we're going now. And we're going to look at Luke 2, verse 41. So when you pause it, if you need more time to look for it, Luke 2, 41. And then when you have Luke 2, 41, then start the video again. Here in Luke 2, 41, Jesus is a little older. And I want you to listen to find out what's different about Jesus' childhood here as compared to ours. Luke 2, 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for a Passover feast. When Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast as usual. Okay, let's stop there for a minute. Do you remember the Passover feast? Do you remember back in Moses' time, which would have been oh, about 1,500 years before this part in the Bible? Do you remember when Moses led God's people out of Egypt. And to remember that, Jesus, uh, God had them 
have a Passover feast every year to remember that special time where God delivered them from Pharaoh's land in Egypt. And even all the way up through to Jesus' time here in Luke 2, the Jew faithful Jewish people celebrated Passover, and one of the ways they had to do it was to travel to Jerusalem in order to be at the temple to celebrate it. So that's what's happening here. They're, everybody around who's a faithful Jewish person is coming for this celebration, this Passover feast, to Jerusalem. So we've been very busy in Jerusalem, very crowded, but that's part of their life. That's what they did on this special holiday. They would travel down there. Now Jesus is 12. See if you can think of somebody who you know it's 12 in your life. If you know my daughter Caroline, she's going to be 12 uh, this week. She's going to turn 12. So that can kind of get your picture in your mind of what 12 years old is like. Okay, let's uh, read again. We're at verse 43. After the feast was over, his parents left to go back home. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were not aware of it. They thought he was somewhere in their group. So they traveled on for a day. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and friends. They did not find him. So they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courtyard. He was sitting with the teachers. He was listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at how much he understood. They were also amazed at his answers. When his parents saw him, they were amazed. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been worried about you. We've been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he meant by that. Then he went back to Nazareth with them and he obeyed them. But his mother kept all these things like a secret treasure in her heart. Jesus became wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and to people. Okay, so if you've ever seen the movie Home Alone, you can probably understand how Mary and Joseph are feeling in this passage. They go, oh no, Jesus isn't with us. Now you might think, how could they possibly have missed that Jesus wasn't with them when they're traveling back home from Jerusalem. But this is why. It wasn't just like when you go on vacation and your whole family piles in a car and you drive to your vacation destination or you go to the grocery store. Everybody gets in the car. So it's be obvious if somebody's missing. What they would do is for safety and just for ease of travel, they would travel in a huge group of people. And all the women would kind of travel together in a huge group. And then the men would travel together in a big group. The little kids would travel with the moms. And then the older kids, like the teenagers, if they're a boy, they would travel with the men. Now, Jesus is 12 here. So that's kind of at the age where you're not really a little kid anymore, but you're not quite a, a teenager yet. So our guess is, based on how we knew they traveled back then, is Mary was with the group of women traveling and she just figured, ah, oh, Jesus must be with Joseph in the group because he's old enough now to be with the men. And Joseph probably didn't have Jesus with him, but thought, eh, Jesus is still kind of young. He's 12, he's probably with Mary. So that's why it took them a little while till they realized that Jesus isn't with them when they're coming home. So now they finally find Jesus is missing and they go back to Jerusalem to find him. And where did they find him? Look in verse 46. It says, after three days, they were looking for him for three days, they found him in the temple courtyard. He was sitting with the teachers. He was listening to them and asking them questions. Now we have a picture of what that might have looked like. And that's the picture in your card if you got that in the mail already. Here we have a picture of young Jesus, five years old, and he's sitting in the temple courtyard. He's talking with these religious teachers, and you can see Mary and Joseph in the background relieved. They finally found Jesus because he wasn't with them. And Mary says, oh, Jesus, we are so worried. And Jesus says in verse 49, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he meant by that. 
here's what I think Jesus meant by this. I think Jesus meant that he knew his purpose on earth was to show God's way to the religious leaders and to all the people around him, but especially religious leaders. We see that later in the Gospels that Jesus tries over and over again to show them, look, this is what the scriptures really mean. Jesus has to come, die on the cross, and rise again, and that's what gives you eternal life. It isn't just about following the rules. That's not what gives you eternal life. And Jesus already at the age of 12 knew that part of his purpose here on earth was to clearly explain God's salvation to people. And I think that's what he's doing here. I think this is kind of special here. We see in um, verse 46 and 47, he was listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at how much he understood. So my guess, he was asking them questions not because he didn't understand something, but he was asking questions to try to get the religious leaders to think and kind of challenging them like, hmm, think about the passage this way. I think this really means that a Savior's going to come and it's going to be different than you think. And everyone was amazed at him. So... Uh, also in this passage, in verse 51, it says, When he went back to Nazareth with them, he obeyed his parents. So we do see this where Jesus being left behind in the temple is not a sin. It's not like he said, well, forget you, Mary and Joseph. Forget you, Mom and Dad. I'm just going to stay in the temple. No, this was not a sin. We know that because Jesus was perfect and he continued to obey them. So this was not an obedience issue. I think this happened so that the religious leaders and Mary and Joseph and we reading this now many years later can understand that even as a child Jesus was focused on what his purpose was here on earth that's not really normal for 12 years old right when you're 12 you're kind of interested in playing right and you're interested in doing fun things making sure you have enough time on YouTube making sure that you can get as little homework done as possible so you can get a good grade. Um, maybe you're, you like to do some hobby stuff, but this was unusual for a 12 year old to be this focused on God's plan. So that, and so from this story, we see there's some similarities about our childhood and that there has to be obedience. We see that Jesus grew in verse 52. He became wiser and stronger and more and more pleasing to God and his people. That's like us too. Once you become a believer in Jesus Christ as your Savior, you continue to grow. That's through the Holy Spirit's power. And you also become wiser and stronger. So that is similar. But here we also have the divine Jesus in his Father's house, very focused on his plan and his mission. So even as a child, Jesus wanted to honor God. Now, he did it in a special way. Let me show you our poster here. Even as a child, Jesus wanted, wanted to go to his father, wanted to do his father's plan. Even as a child, Jesus wanted to do his father's plan. Now, that's a good challenge for us, too, because sometimes you might think, well, I'm just a kid. What can I do? But even as a child, you can honor God's plan as well. You don't have the same purpose as Jesus Christ because Jesus is God and man. He was here to die on the cross, rise again for our salvation. That's not your purpose in life. But God does have a plan for you. And through that purpose and plan that Jesus has, that God has for your life, you can honor him. So let's think about some questions that can help us understand that. Who does God want us to honor and why? Who does God want us to honor in our lives and why? Here's some examples. God tells us to honor our father and mother. If your mom and dad tell you to do something, instead of arguing or complaining about it, you can obey and do it cheerfully. That would be a way to honor God. Another way to honor God is uh, and who God wants us to honor. Who does God want us to honor? He wants us to honor other believers and people in our family. 
That means we speak kindly to one another. It means we don't roll our eyes at one another when they're getting annoying. It means we're patient with one another. That's a way to show honor. Another word for that would be respect. Um, our next question is how can we grow in wisdom and obedience to God? We saw how Jesus grew in wisdom and obedience to God. How can we do that? Here's something I always encourage you guys to do. Read your Bible every day. Now that you can read, you're old enough to do that. Matthew and Luke would be a great place to start. You can read a paragraph or two every day. You can read a chapter every day. But these stories are going to be familiar because they're Jesus' life and they're easier to read. So reading your Bible every day can help you grow in wisdom. Also prayer every day. Praying to help uh, have God help you in the Holy Spirit's power to be obedient to Him and to be pleasing to Him. Prayer so that you can acknowledge that God is in control and that you can learn to trust Him. Another way you can grow in wisdom and obedience is to make church a priority. That's especially hard now because of not being able to actually go to church. And it might be especially hard to say, oh, I don't need to watch church on video. I'm just going to watch something else. But you can make church a priority uh, for, and this is what we can do right now is just have videos or you can decide, well, I'm going to reach out to my friends from church and give them a message or write them a card. That's a way to show that church is a priority right now. One last question. How can God use you in his kingdom even when you're young? You know, you can share Christ with others. You know people that other adults don't know that need to know Jesus Christ. You have friends, you have neighbors, you have family members, and maybe you're the only person they know that loves Jesus. You have an opportunity to share Christ with them. You can do that by praying. You can do that by trying to mention Jesus and how much he means to you. And that can make them interested in Jesus. We can also rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us as we follow Jesus. Because I don't want you to get the impression that God is standing up in heaven going, well, I wish they got it together and just always did the right thing and were always perfect. No, God knows we can't be perfect. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. So we can't do it um, just by trying really hard. We can be pleasing to God by saying, God, I, I want to be pleasing to you. Please give me the power to do that. And if you listen to his instructions, uh, he will give you the power to obey and the power to be pleasing to him and to be kind to others. Thank you for uh, being with me today. If you have any questions, you can ask your mom or dad to message them to me, or you can message them to me, or you can send me a card or an email. But otherwise, I want to encourage you that even though you're young, you can live in a way that honors the Lord just like Jesus did. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much that we have stories from Matthew 2 and Luke chapter 2 that show what you're like as a kid. And Lord, it's not easy to be a kid. And it's sometimes hard to know how to listen to you. And it's hard to want to do the right thing. But I pray that your Holy Spirit would give us strength to be obedient and to be honoring to you and the others around us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for coming to Children's Church today.